Have you heard the one about the teacher who trains for the Olympics on the side? What about the nurse who plays with rocks on the ice when she's not busy treating her patients? As it turns out, Olympic athlete isn't usually a lifelong career. Born in Patterson, New Jersey, Jackie Dubrovich got into fencing at the tender age of eight. As she told NBC10 Philadelphia, she didn't care for the sport all that much at first, especially because she had to endure a good amount of teasing from her classmates. But she stuck it out and even went on to become the captain of the nationally ranked Columbia University team for two years. In 2020, her talents won her a spot on the U.S. Olympic team. Her efforts in Tokyo earned her a 21st place finish individually and helped her team take the fourth spot overall. Dubrovich has managed to reach this level of athletic success while also maintaining a 9-to-5 job. According to her LinkedIn profile, she's worked as an account strategist at Critio since 2020, thereby putting her education in psychology, human rights, and Russian literature and culture to good use. Balancing training and a career hasn't always been easy for her, but as she told NBC10 Philadelphia, Looking back on it, I don't remember all those tough times. I just really think about the end goal and how I've been able to accomplish it. In 2006, Pete Fenson helped bring home the United States' first Olympic medal in curling as both the skip and the captain for Team USA. It was a role he'd been training for his entire life, as his father Bob was a national champion in the sport who taught his sons the game from an early age. In a 2014 interview with PMQ Pizza Magazine, the younger Fenson said that curling is a family sort of game and that he attributed much of his success to the fact that he grew up surrounded by it in his hometown of Bemidji, Minnesota. Curling wasn't the only thing Fenson fell in love with in Bemidji. It's also where he met his wife Roxanne and where he tried his first slice of Dave's Pizza. Opened in 1958, Dave's is something of a local staple. When it went up for sale in the late 90s, Pete and Roxanne decided to buy it. Since then, they've expanded the number of locations and added in a host of new and exciting flavor options. Juggling the two demanding roles can't be easy, but Fenson has demonstrated that he's equally capable of keeping his cool on the rink and toiling in front of a 500-degree pizza oven. Another Olympic curler with ties to Bemidji, Minnesota, Jeff Isaacson competed in both the 2010 Vancouver Games and the Sochi Games in 2014. As a Minnesota native, it's likely that he fell into curling the same way that Pete Fenson did, through family and community ties. Less has been reported about his amateur experience, but we do know, as reported by Time magazine, that by the 2014 Games, he was experienced enough to be named Vice Skip, the second most important position on a curling team. A lot of times it's called chess on ice just because of the strategy component of the game. But just like Fenson, curling isn't Isaacson's only job. At the time of the 2014 Olympics, he was a junior high chemistry teacher. As he revealed to Yahoo, his students are equal parts impressed and indifferent about their teacher's double life, as they hate when he's out of the classroom for competitions, but are always eager to hear his stories when he returns. Like many American teachers, it seems that Isaacson is also supplementing his income with a second job. He's the manager of the Chaska Curling Center, where he surely puts his breadth of knowledge about the sport to good use. Compared to many other Olympians, Ibtihaj Muhammad came to her sport late. She tried out a number of other games in her childhood, including volleyball and softball, but it wasn't until she reached high school that she discovered fencing. It didn't take long, though, for her raw talent to become evident, as the saber-wielding teenager was promptly promoted to captain of her school's team. Once I had my uniform on and my mask went on, you know, people didn't see me for my race, they didn't see me for my religion, they didn't see me for my gender. She continued on to compete at Duke University, where she was named to the All-American team three times while earning a double major in African American Studies and International Relations. Then, in 2016, she represented the U.S. Olympic team at the Rio Games. At the Olympics, Muhammad took 12th place in the individual competition and helped her team bring home a bronze medal. On top of that, she also made headlines as the first American athlete to compete at the Olympics in a hijab. As a Muslim woman, modesty is extremely important to Muhammad, and it's this tenet of her faith that inspired her to pursue her non-fencing career. In 2014, she launched Luella, an affordable fashion brand that fills a gap in the market for on-trend, modest clothes. A three-time Olympian, Michelle Carter competed in the shot put in the 2008, 2012, and 2016 Summer Games. Like many other Olympic athletes, Carter was introduced to this particular track and field event through a family member, namely her father Michael, who won a silver medal himself in shot put at the 1984 Olympics. 
Michelle took up the sport as a junior in high school, going on to win multiple state titles and a full-ride scholarship to the University of Texas. At her third games in Rio, she finally claimed the biggest prize of them all, a gold medal. She also set an American record with her winning throw, surpassing 67 feet. A self-confessed beauty junkie, Carter's look on the field often garnered just as much attention as her athletic accomplishments. After all, her bold red lips, perfectly polished fingernails, and big hoop earrings stood out in a sea of sameness. In 2015, her love of all things hair and makeup inspired her to start her own beauty business called Shot Diva. A licensed cosmetologist, she does clients' glam for everything from weddings to events. While her two passions may seem at odds, she holds strongly to the belief that a woman shouldn't have to choose between looking good and feeling athletic. Born in London, Ontario, Canada, Lanny Marchant first took up running as a way to cross-train for her primary sport, ice skating. It wasn't until her sophomore year of high school, when she joined the cross-country team, that she realized running was now her true passion. It all worked out spectacularly in the end, as she made the Canadian Olympic team in 2016, running both the 10,000 meters and the marathon at the Rio Games. And getting to the finish line of any race is going to have its ups and downs, and I think that's something that every individual takes pride in and gets excited about. Injuries have unfortunately sidelined Marchant recently. She was unable to compete at the Tokyo Olympics due to a series of broken bones in her lower body and chronic illnesses, but she hasn't fully ruled out a comeback, as she told Canadian Running Magazine in 2021. Although she's taken a break from pounding the pavement, she's remained plenty busy as a criminal defense attorney in Chattanooga, Tennessee. She earned law degrees from both the University of Ottawa and Michigan State University, and as she wrote on her personal website, my roles as a criminal defense attorney in Tennessee, and now Canada's fastest female marathon and half marathon runner, make for an amazing double life that I take great pride in. Jared Ward wasn't an immediate talent like some of the other athletes on this list, but tireless effort and dedication helped him hone his skills as a long distance runner. He started running from a young age, though his diminutive size kept him from being a contender in those early days. Nevertheless, he had the heart for the sport, and with the encouragement of a good coach and plenty of hard work, he helped lead his high school's track and cross-country teams to state titles his senior year. He went on to run cross-country for Brigham Young University in Utah, before running the marathon for Team USA at the 2016 Olympics. As it turns out, BYU was more than just a place for Ward to get an education and some competitive experience. He graduated in 2015 with both a bachelor's and master's degree in statistics and went on to secure an adjunct professor position in that same department. When he's not training with the current BYU team for the 2024 Paris Olympics, he teaches classes, holds office hours, and mentors young runners who want to follow in his footsteps. For Alex Nador, both of his careers, gymnastics and real estate, are dynastic. His father, Mike, owns the USA Youth Fitness Center in Gilbert, Arizona, and he put Alex in classes at his gym as soon as he was eligible. Then when Alex showed signs of promise, his dad promoted him to the competitive team and became his primary coach. They then made it to the 2012 Olympic Games, where Alex was an alternate, as well as the 2016 Games, where Alex brought home the bronze medal in the pommel horse, thereby becoming the first American man to win an international medal in the event in 31 years. Gymnastics is famously hard on the body, and Alex knew that he wouldn't be able to compete forever, so he followed in his mother's footsteps by obtaining his Arizona real estate license. He surely appreciates the flexibility of the job, which allowed him to earn money around his five-hour practices, packed competition schedule, and various tours. Now as a retired gymnast, his LinkedIn profile reflects that he continues to sell homes in the hours when he's not coaching in the gym. A third-generation curling lead, John Landsteiner began competing in local bond spiels from a young age. A natural at the icy game, it wasn't long before he was invited to bigger and bigger curling tournaments, and eventually he was offered a spot on the U.S. national team. A two-time Olympian, Landsteiner competed in both the 2014 and 2018 games, as he helped the men's team bring home the gold in 2018. The veteran team competed in the 2022 Beijing Games and finished in fourth place, narrowly missing out on the bronze. For the better part of two decades, Landsteiner has devoted hours to training and traveling for curling competitions, but he's also still somehow managed to hold down a full-time job. He works as a civil engineer for Lake Superior Consulting, managing energy pipeline projects across the upper Midwest. Rather than being concerned that his passion takes him out of the office so often, it appears that Landsteiner's employer is cheering on his athletic ambitions. Following a 2018 Curling World Cup win, he tweeted, 
Big thanks to my employer, Lake Superior Consulting, for supporting our league team. They have been supportive of all of my competitive curling through the last six years of working there. Finally, we come to Nina Roth, yet another Midwestern curler. A Wisconsin native, she was the skip for the 2018 Women's Olympic team, who finished in eighth place that year. She reprised the role at the 2022 Games in Beijing, where the U.S. team came in sixth. She discovered the sport at the age of 10, when her Girl Scout troop took a field trip to a local curling club. As she revealed to ESPN, I just fell in love with it. I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be an Olympian, and I dedicated a lot of my time to get there. I was a very determined 10-year-old girl when I started curling, and I fell in love with curling, and then right after it, fell in love with the idea of being an Olympian. But curling isn't Roth's only passion. She also loves helping people, and to that end, she has a separate career as a nurse. For the past decade, she's worked at a Wisconsin hospital, caring for long-term patients who have experienced serious trauma. While speaking with Wisconsin's WKOW after her last Olympics, she revealed, I'm very lucky to have found two big passions in my life, curling and nursing. And it's so nice to be able to get back and focus on that other passion that I've kind of put to the side a little bit while focusing on curling. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nikki Swift videos about your favorite athletes and other celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.